Daily Show host Trevor Noah continues to make his mark on late night comedy. He recently introduced viewers to his grandmother in his hometown of Johannesburg to discuss his childhood under apartheid. His grandmother, his grandma, said she used to be scared police would take Noah because he was a mixed race and interracial relationships were illegal. Why did I give you a tough time, Google? Because we wanted to play in the street and I knew the flying squad was going to take me. So if I was playing in the street, the police would have arrested me? Yeah! You know there were kids. <laughs> Noah shares how his family <laughs> kept him hidden in his memoir, Born a Crime, stories from a South African childhood. The New York Times named it one of the top books of 2016. Trevor Noah? Good morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, so yeah. great to have you here. You and your grandmother. Oh, oh yeah, yes. she was great. She yeah. was really fun. She still doesn't get what we were doing because she doesn't watch <laughs> Does the Does she Daily know what show. you do? Have you sent her no, tapes or anything? No, but you? and you know what's great is that she doesn't what? care. That's yeah. what I love. So my grand just goes, he's Trevor. That's why I like him. Uh -huh. So I don't want her love of me to be determined by what I do or don't do in, yeah. in, in my work world. Yeah, you wow. couldn't play in the street, and so now you get to play on TV. <laughs> um, Trevor, now getting serious for a moment, what do you make of what's happening with the Virginia governor? Oh, well, that's, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting conversation that I feel like we need to break down into so many pieces. First of all, um, I think a lot of people uh, are hurt when you keep getting reminders of where America has come from and where America is for many people. You know, to see somebody who's in power and you look back and you go like, oh, you were wearing blackface, you were part of this organization. Even if he says that that wasn't him, he says he wore blackface for a Michael Jackson competition. I think a lot of the time it reminds people of uh, a conversation that hasn't been had in America, mm -hmm. it feels like. And that's a conversation around race and America's past. And a lot of people say, oh, but it's over now. It's like, yes, but you still have to have the conversations around it. And to his credit, mm -hmm. Governor Northam does say, he says he wants to have the conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to because, mm -hmm. like, you keep going further and further down the chain, you're going to find more and more blackface in Virginia. It's, it's not yeah. going to end. Right, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so we, we like to think that we can, we can fire a person or we can get rid of somebody when we find something like this. But that doesn't solve the problem. Exactly. That doesn't have the yes, conversation. Right. And, and someone took that photo of him. Someone put that photo in the yearbook. Someone stood next to him in that photo. Someone was, everyone was in that community. So the larger conversation is, in Virginia, what conversations do they need to be having around race and everywhere else? And he's still saying, for the record, though, Trevor, that that wasn't him in the photo. And when we were in Virginia this weekend, the driver who was driving said, you know, this still exists here. Right. This is still, you know... We can take you places right now where people are still dressing up in blackface. And so I think you're right. We've got to have the conversation. And I suppose that's one of the reasons why you commend Liam Neeson for coming oh, yeah, forward well, and saying that, that he profiled, well, what right? I, what I, yeah, what I was saying was I, I prefer what happened with Liam Neeson, you know? Uh, one thing I talk about in my book, Born a Crime, is the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. South Africa's not perfect. Our system wasn't perfect. But one thing I did appreciate is that I come from a country where we had to sit down and have completely truthful conversations about where the country was and how it came to be that way. And so I think what that gives you is a certain level of honesty when having these conversations. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would rather have it that people speak and say, like Liam Neeson did, hey, I had these horrible thoughts, even if it was 40 years ago, right. you know? And it does dig up wounds where many people will say, as a black person, it feels like an assault. You go, you realize how fragile the black life is. <laughs> But it, I would prefer that conversation to be had. And given that history with truth and reconciliation, to talk about how you have to hear things like what Liam Neeson is saying. So he's being honest. Right. What about on the receiving end of hearing something like that, which to a lot of people would be, you know, is well, incredibly I, And shocking. he gets hammered for being honest. Well, right. but here's my thing, though. Mm -hmm. If you were a black person reading that headline, mm -hmm. and that's where my problem comes from a lot of the time is the headline. You cannot expect a black person mm. to have the work now of feeling <laughs> bad for Liam Neeson. The headline reads, <laughs> Liam Neeson roamed the streets looking for a black person to kill. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes uh, society makes, uh, you know, puts the onus on, on the victims or puts the onus on those people who have been hurt by the situation and goes, well, wh how do you think about his, think about his position, think about him. But if you're a black person, yeah. it sounds like and it feels like that you're living in a world yeah. where your the, life the is hurts. always on the line and the headline doesn't help. I know that you're on the road traveling around the country. You were in Wisconsin, Minnesota over the weekend. Right. Mm -hmm. Does your comedy translate in different? Does your comedy translate different ways in different parts of this country? Well, it, you know, you know what's what's funny is when I look at my comedy, when I look at the book, um, 
one of the things I realized is stories are universal, yeah. right? Our, our figures of speech are different. The way we, we speak, our accents are all different. You know, you say controversy, I say controversy, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's always going to change. But, but what, I've, what I've learned, and, and genuinely the book has been one of my, my, my greatest gifts. There was a, there was a kid um, who came to one of my shows in uh, St. Paul. Uh -huh. in uh, Minneapolis, uh, um, in Minnesota. And, and he came, and he, he couldn't come to the show, but he just wanted to come because he had read the book. And this is a young kid who grew up in America, and he said, hey, your life reminded me of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, but how? How did you grow up like, like I did? And he's like, no, but there were so many things that you felt that I felt. I, yeah. I grew up and I see my mom the same way and my family yeah. the same way. And so I've come to learn that if we can find things that connect us as human beings, you will find that many of us are on a similar journey. It's just we focus on the things that separate us more than the things that bring we us together. We are more alike yes. in many yeah. ways than we yeah. are. Yeah. At the end of the day, we can always reach out to your grand for questions. Oh, yeah, you, you genuinely <laughs> can. <laughs> Trevor, thank you. Thank you, Dave Chappelle, to see your grandmother was hilarious. Oh, thank Africa. you. That was a lot of fun. And again, she funny. didn't know who he was. <laughs> Even better, of course, Even better. yes. <laughs> Thank you. And the paperback edition of Born a Crime is on sale tomorrow.